Hi, my name is Carly Kelly. I have my bachelor's in dietetics, and I'm currently working as the graduate assistant coach for the Madonna University volleyball team, where I work as the strength and conditioning coordinator and nutritionist. Today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about nutrition for athletic performance, specifically for female volleyball athletes. First, we want to figure out our energy expenditure, so how many calories that we're going to need in a day to sustain our exercise. To do this, we want to start with calculating our resting metabolic rate. This is the rate at which our body burns calories when our bodies are in a resting state. So to figure out the RMR for females, you can look at the second bullet on the slide and plug in your information. So you'll plug in your weight, your height, and your age. You want to make sure that your weight is in kilograms and your height is in centimeters so that you get the correct values. Once you have your RMR, we're going to multiply by our activity factor. Um, an activity factor is going to resemble where an athlete is in their training cycle. So for in-season athletes, their activity factor is probably going to be a little bit higher because they're training more days per week. They're training a little bit more intense compared to athletes in their off-season who are exercising less often and maybe with less intensity. After we multiply by our activity factor, we get our value for how many calories that we're burning in a day. And based on how many calories we're burning in a day, we can ma manipulate our energy and our macronutrient intake to reach body composition goals or specific performance goals that an, that an athlete will have. I want to talk a little bit about macronutrients before we jump in. So um, the first macronutrient I'm going to talk about is carbohydrates. It's the primary fuel source for the brain, the central nervous system, and our muscles. So obviously it's going to be super important for athletic performance. So an athlete's plate should consist of about 50% carbohydrates, um, and our daily recommendation will be anywhere from 3 to 7 grams per kilogram per day. Obviously, this is going to depend highly on our activity factor, so whether or not we're in season and exercising a lot, or we might be out of season in one to three days, just light exercise, that's going to depend a lot upon um, how many grams of carbohydrates we're going to need in a day. So the next macronutrient is protein. Um, dietary protein provides the body with essential amino acids for maintaining body tissues like muscles or ligaments or tendons, also things like hair, skin, nails, organs. Um, our recommendation for protein is going to be 1 to 8 grams per kilogram per day. And we want to make sure that we're getting our protein in small amounts throughout the day and not just taking it all in at once. And that's because our body can only process so much protein at a time. And anything that isn't processed is usually stored as fat from any of the macronutrients. And we want to avoid that if we're trying to manipulate body composition for athletic performance. And then finally, we have fat, which facilitates the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins, which are your vitamins A, D, E, and K. And it also provides essential fatty acids for your body. About 25 to 30 percent of calories consumed should come from fats, and less than 10 percent of that should be saturated fat. Um, and decreasing fat intake is usually the solution for manipulating body composition for athletes. That's just because fat is such a high energy macro, and um, the importance of carbohydrates for fueling and protein for recovery. Um, we definitely don't want to compromise those. So we usually decrease fat when we're trying to manipulate body composition. However, we only want to do this for a short period of time because we want to make sure that we're getting all of our fat-soluble vitamins and our essential fatty acids that are also vital for our health. So I want to talk a little bit about hydration as well. Hydration is super important for athletic performance and just our overall health in general. Um, water can help us to regulate our body temperatures. It lubricates our joints. It carries nutrients and oxygen to our body cells. It can protect our organs and tissues, and it can help to prevent constipation and multiple other things. So it's definitely important for athletic performance and for our health overall. But when it comes to hydration, we definitely want to focus on water first. I know a lot of athletes will turn to different sports drinks or they drink a lot of coffee or tea or energy drinks and things like that. But when we're focusing on hydration, water is definitely key. So how much water do we need per day? Um, the recommendation is to have half of your body weight in fluid ounces per day. So, for example, if I was 150 pounds, half of that would be 75. So I want 75 fluid ounces of water per day. And then with additional physical activity, you want to increase your water intake. So for every 15 minutes 
of high intensity physical activity, we want to increase our water intake by eight fluid ounces. That's just as a general rule of thumb. However, it's going to depend um, upon how much you sweat and it's very individualized. So you'll see some of your teammates at practice who hardly sweat at all. And then you have the others who are just drenched after warmups. So obviously those who are sweating more are going to need to replace more water. Um, a good indicator to check your hydration status is looking at the color of your pee. So there's a chart here in the top left that kind of shows you what your pee will look like when you're more hydrated and when you're starting to get dehydrated. So it's a really good indicator of hydration status and something that you should definitely start paying attention to. Are you exercising longer than an hour? I ask this because this is when we start getting into supplementing electrolytes. If you are doing more physical activity that lasts longer than an hour and is high intensity, we would definitely want to start focusing on um, supplementing electrolytes as well because as you drink more and more water, you're starting to dilute your electrolytes, which can affect your performance. So you can get electrolytes from things like Gatorade or Powerade, um, noon tabs, those little tabs that dissolve in water. Uh, the Gatorade Chews are super popular and a lot of other different brands and different things, but it's definitely something to keep in mind when you're getting into physical activity that lasts longer than an hour. Now that you have a little bit of a background on the nutrients that you're going to need, let's talk a little bit about grocery shopping. It's important when you're grocery shopping to have a plan and a list, and it's really important to stick to that. What I like to do is split up my grocery lists into different categories, which usually coordinate with different sections of the store, making it a lot easier so I'm not running back and forth to pick up things that I might have forgotten in different areas of the store. The categories that I lay out for myself are fruits and veggies, meat and protein, dairy, grains, spices, and other essentials like condiments or dressings or oils and things like that for cooking. So the first section is fruits and veggies. There's obviously different forms of fruits and veggies that you can get, whether you want fresh, frozen, canned, or dried, and there are pros and cons to a lot of them. So I've listed some here. You guys can take a minute to pause the video and look over some of the things to figure out um, what produce might work for you, and it might depend on the types. So a lot of times I'll buy fresh bananas, but once they start going brown because I hadn't eaten them in time, I'll cut them up and decide to freeze them then so that they're nice and sweet and they're easy to throw into smoothies. But like I said, you guys can pause the video and take a look at these. So the next section of the grocery list would be meat and protein. So in this section, I include I included things like chicken breast, deli meats, beef or pork, which we do want to limit a little bit just because of the high fat content. But it is important to include just because it also has micronutrients like zinc and iron that are important for athletes. But then we have things like eggs, lentils, tofu. A lot of this stuff is um, relatively low cost. Canned beans are a great way to incorporate fiber and protein into your diet. The next category on my shopping list is dairy. A lot of people might have lactose intolerance or have issues with dairy, but if you don't, I think it is a really important category to keep in mind when you're at the grocery store um, because not only is it a good source of protein, but you can also get a lot of your micronutrients that are important for injury prevention like calcium and in some cases, fortified milks with vitamin D to help with bone strength. So I've included things like milk, white or chocolate. Chocolate milk is a good thing for recovery after a workout. We want to stick between like the fat-free and 2%. Anything higher than 2% probably isn't the best option just because the fat content is all saturated fat. Um, cheese is a good option. It also can be high in saturated fat, so it's something you want to limit, but it does have calcium and protein, which is um, good for athletes. And then we have yogurt. I usually stick to non-fat plain Greek yogurt because you can flavor that yogurt in any kind of way that you want, whether you want to sweeten it or use it for a savory dish. I use it to replace my sour cream in a lot of dishes, um, so it's a really good option. Kefir, if people are interested in that, a lot of people don't even know what it is, but it's kind of like a flavored yogurt drink. It's similar to if you guys have ever had like Danimals as kids, something like that. And then cottage cheese is also a good option. Um, I usually stick to the low fat cottage cheese as well. You can mix that with fruit or sliced tomatoes. You can season it, add herbs and spices um, to 
change the flavor profile a little bit, but it's also a really good source of protein and calcium. The next section of our grocery list is going to be grains. So some of the things that I like to buy when I'm at the store are things like bread and buns so I can make sandwiches, wraps, um, crackers, pretzels, pasta. I don't know if you guys have heard of bonza, but it's made from, it's pasta that's made from chickpeas, which is a good option. It, it increases the protein content and also the fiber content. Or you can do whole wheat pasta, which is also a really good option. Um, I also buy things like granola, hot and cold cereals, but, and I always have um, a container of old-fashioned oats in my cupboard. The last section of the grocery list is going to be herbs, spices, and more, or just miscellaneous section. So I put things like the cooking oils that I'll need or different herbs and spices to kind of switch up the flavor profiles in the kitchen. So I might throw together a stir fry that's Asian inspired one night and with the same ingredients and just different herbs and spices, I can make fajitas the next night. Now that we've talked a little bit about the grocery store, we can talk about building meals and snacks with the groceries that we've gotten. I have a little table here to the side to show you guys kind of how athletes should look to build certain meals or snacks. As you can see, a lot of the plate is um, vegetables and grains, which are a lot of carbohydrates, super important for performance. And we have a, about 25% of the plate dedicated to lean protein options. We have our cooking oils and spices and stuff like that around the outside. Um, just a good visual representation of the things that we want to look for. So what I ask myself when I'm making a meal or a snack is how can I add value to this meal or snack? How can I up the protein? How can I increase the micros, my vitamins and minerals? How can I add flavor using herbs and spices and different oils? And how can I add energy if I want to make sure that I have a high energy snack so I'm well prepared for my performance later on that day? How can I increase the energy content of my meal or snack? On this slide, I've kind of outlined some meal ideas, some of the meals that I stick to often um, when I'm trying to eat healthy or fuel for performance. I have some breakfast options here. I have omelets, smoothies, cold or hot cereal, toasts, yogurt parfaits. These are all recipes that can be easily manipulated and changed up. So I have omelets as my number one. This could be um, switched up by adding different types of vegetables or adding cheese or meat. So you can use things like tomatoes, mushrooms, um, spinach, peppers, onions, different spices. You can add feta cheese or um, Mexican shredded cheese uh, just for different profi flavor profiles. And then smoothies, you can add things like different fruits and vegetables, mixed berry blends, um, Bananas, you can add protein sources, whether you want to use protein powder or you want to use Greek yogurt, which is something that I use a lot in my smoothies. Um, you can add nut butters or um, chia and flax seeds. Hot and cold cereals, I usually stick to hot cereals just because I'm a big fan of oatmeal, but um, I usually add a scoop of protein powder to my oatmeal or even Greek yogurt to my oatmeal. And then I'll do dark chocolate chips and mixed berries, something like that, just to um, change it up. Another day I might add peanut butter and banana to it. So um, that's something that can be very versatile. Toast, I sometimes do toasted PB&Js when I'm in a rush to get out of the house. Um, I also do avocado toast or tuna avocado toast with hot sauce on it. Um, just really quick, fast, healthy options. And then... Yogurt parfaits are obviously very versatile depending on what kind of fruit you want to use, what kind of granola you want to use. Um, I add honey or dark chocolate chips or coconut flakes to mine to switch it up. And then for lunch and dinner, soup, salad, and sandwiches are usually pretty popular options. Um, also really good ways to get a lot of vegetables into your diet. Um, soups can include any kind of vegetable really. Whenever I'm making soups at home, I Start with a protein source, whether it be black beans, kidney beans, tofu, shredded chicken, something like that. And then I find whatever vegetables I have, whether they be in my freezer or on my counter, starting to get a little wilty and wrinkly and I need to use them up. I chop them up real small and throw them into a soup and it's super easy. 
and it's something that I can make in bulk and eat throughout the week. So it's um, not so time consuming throughout my week to um, cook and meal prep. And salads are also a really easy option. I know some of you guys live in the dorms on campus at Madonna and salad bar is a really good option that they offer there. You can um, make a salad more satiating and more um, calorie dense by adding things like egg or cheese or different meats, dried fruit, um, nuts and seeds, things like that, that increase the nutritive value a lot. Um, sandwiches, obviously can be very versatile as well. Uh, pasta, like I was talking about earlier, I use bonza pasta, which is a legume pasta, and there are tons of other kinds of like lentil pastas and things like that. But there are also vegetable pastas or whole wheat pastas, which are great options if you're trying to get a good amount of carbohydrates in because you're fueling for um, a practice or an event. Um, stir fries, another great way to get in lean proteins and lots of veggies. Tacos and quesadillas, same story. Um, casseroles, I usually make quinoa casseroles. And you can add, again, any kind of fruits or vegetables that you've got, you've got in the kitchen and then just season it up however you like. Mixed meals, this is just something that I like to do on a sheet pan. It's like a one-dish kind of deal where I just throw a chicken breast, a bunch of chopped up vegetables, and a potato wrapped in foil all on a baking sheet, throw it in the oven, comes out, and we have a full meal. So it's something that's super easy and relatively cheap. And then for this slide, I've just kind of listed a bunch of different snack ideas. These are some things that I usually kind of um, steer towards when I'm looking for a healthy snack. One of the big ones that I've been um, into lately is hard-boiled eggs because they're super easy. I can buy uh, a dozen eggs at the beginning of the week and hard-boil all of them, and then two hard-boiled eggs is a good um, snack on the go. You can just throw them into your bag and head out. Uh, it's also a super cheap option and a really good source of protein. Then you have different fruits with um, dips or nut butters. I make a really good ranch dip if you use plain Greek yogurt and you just add the Hidden Valley Ranch packet to it. That's good for um, veggie dip. And then I, I eat turkey jerky a lot. I make quick roasted veggies, just chopping them up and throwing them in the oven. Trail mix is a super easy and quick snack. Of course, yogurt and granola, grapes and cheese, pretzels, things like that. Um, and then one of the other things that I like to turn to is different kinds of bars. So when I'm looking for kinds of bars that I can have on the go and I want to make sure that I'm keeping them healthy, I look for bars on the ingredients list that have 10 or fewer ingredients. And I like to steer clear of bars that have more than 15 grams of sugar in them. And I try to make sure that the bars also have a good amount of protein in them. So like 10 to 15 grams of protein is a good base or somewhere around there. But when it comes to snacks, it's just about being creative and asking yourself, how can you increase the nutritive value of whatever you're going to eat? Okay, these are my references. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or you just want some more individualized guidance, you can leave a comment below or contact me directly with the contact information that I've provided to you guys. So thank you for watching, and I hope this video was helpful for you.